flower friends, it's Nicole from Flower Hill Farm and I am a cut flower farmer in upstate New York. I'm entering my sixth season and one of the most common questions I get on almost a daily basis, whether it be on YouTube, Instagram, direct messaging, emails, I get all the messages. A lot of you guys are asking me what my favorite filler flowers are because you're planning out your cut flower farms or your fields, or you're just a home gardener and you'd like to put together some of your own bouquets. So I'm gonna to talk to you guys today about my favorite filler flowers and they run the gamut from just greenery all the way to just gorgeous color and texture. Let's talk about my favorite fillers on my cut flower farm. I'm gonna get this first one out of the way. You guys know it, I talk about it all the time, and we are talking about basil. Basil in all shapes and forms. You've got Mrs. Burns citrus lemon basil, you've got cinnamon basil, and lime basil, and don't forget all the other ones. We've got cardinal basil, we've even got, you know, sweet Thai basil all of the basils, I've grown most of them, and they are something my customers have come to expect and know me for. If you come to my table at the farmer's market, you are going to get hit in the face very first thing with basil, usually lemon, it's the strongest scent. Anyway, basil, can't go wrong. A little bit of a tip when harvesting basil, do it at least 24 hours before so that it can rehydrate because if you cut it, Sometimes it has a tendency to wilt for a few hours and then bounce back to life. You don't want that bounce back to lifetime to be when it's in your customer's hands. So you wanna make sure that you give it 24 hours to hydrate before adding it to your bouquet. I recommend growing basil from seed. It's really easy. Number two, and these are in no particular order, but another one of my favorite filler flowers, another one of my favorite filler flowers is status. Status is an amazing cut flower and I'm gonna tell you all the reasons why. Number one, it dries amazingly. Number two, it's super easy to grow. You can start it from seed or you could also bring plugs in. And it's also a cool flower. If you're not familiar with a cool flower, it can take a little bit lower temperature than your normal warm season annual. So you can get it in the ground sooner than say a zinnia. So if you're growing status, you'll want to know that you should space them between nine and 12 inches apart. If you put them any closer together, they're, they have a tendency to get too big for their space and you want to make sure that they have some air movement inside where you're planting them. Last year I did a nine inch spacing and I found that worked out well. But if you have the space to give them 12 inches, give them 12 inches. Status comes in an array of colors. You really can't go wrong with it. My favorites are white and the peach apricot status. It goes with everything. If you have a limited space and you don't want to grow all of the colors, I recommend maybe leaving yellow out. Sorry, I love yellow, but sometimes the, the harshness of the yellow status just kind of doesn't look right in my bouquets with the other colors that I'm growing. Pink, kind of the same. My favorites are white, apricot, and blue. Goodness gracious, that blue is stunning, especially when paired with a little bit of Sweet Annie and sunflowers. Okay, moving on to number three, Gomfrina, guys. I call them the lollipop flower. Gomfrina is such an amazing flower. It literally bounces when you put it in a bouquet. I like to put between four and six stems of Gomfrina in a bouquet. That way it's kind of all around the outside. And honestly, white and carmine are my favorites, but it comes in many other colors and they're all really usable and suitable and they blend well together. Gumfrina really dries well. In fact, I used it at workshops at the nursery. We did a dried flower pumpkin decorating class and it was really fun. Gumfrina is also one of those flowers that people like to buy um, in bunches. So if you just have a bunch of Gumfrina, it's very attractive and people are drawn to it and they can just have Gumfrina, just a whole bunch of it in a vase in their house for months at a time because it dries. Okay, moving on to amaranth. Amaranth is absolutely one of my favorite fillers. Number one, it's bulky. It takes up a lot of space in the bouquet. So if you're looking for something to fill your bouquet out, the texture of amaranth is amazing. The colors are so good. Green, coral, uh, copper, burgundy, all of these colors are so good when it comes to adding in just some life to your bouquet. Now it also comes in different 
shapes. You've got the amaranth that is like coral fountains that is draping down. You've got hot biscuits that just shoot straight up. You also have like the little, like a ponytail one too. I can't remember off the top of my head what the variety is called, but my favorite is Hot Biscuits. It has that gorgeous copper color that's perfect for fall. Also, amaranth is super easy to start from seed. In fact, it will reseed itself. It pops up down the hill all the time, all over my cut flower field. Anyway, it's super easy to start from seed. Also, it dries well. Different varieties dry better than others, so do some research on which one will dry best for you. You can also wear it as a wig. Moving on down the line, we are talking about Celosia. Celosia is similar to amaranth where it has a big impact. It is gorgeous colors. Also, the different shapes. You've got the plumes, which are my favorite, but you also have the brains and they come in all sorts of different colors, even some peaches and some corals and some pinks. Those are hugely popular coming into 2024 and you can't go wrong with Celosia. Celosia and Amaranth are pretty fast to harvest and it's also another one that's easy to start from seed. And you can save your own seeds from Celosia and Amaranth pretty successfully. A lot of people like the brain formation. <laughs> but I don't particularly love it. However, I will say that the customers are drawn to it when they see it at my booth and they will definitely ask me about the brain celosia if they see it in one of my bouquets. Another one of my favorite fillers is Feverfew. Feverfew has this magic about it. I quite literally think that it dances in the wind. It really does. Feverfew, there's a couple different forms of this as well. I prefer the magic single fever few. I don't really care for the double almost snowball looking ones and the reason why is because um, it doesn't stay for me in a bouquet. It tends to wilt. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Maybe I'm not harvesting it at the right point but the magic single fever few, the white with the yellow centers, they are fantastic for me in a bouquet. Honestly if I could grow that all year round and use that in every single bouquet I would because it's that good. It's also a cool flower so you can start it earlier. Also a perennial for a lot of us, most of us, I think down to a zone three and uh, I've People tend to grow it as an annual, but I left a whole row of it inside the hoop house and it's coming back. So we'll see how successful I can overwinter the fever few and how productive it is for me after an entire season. I'm really excited to experiment with that and try it out. But because I'm not sure how it's gonna do, I did start some seed. <laughs> okay guys, one more and this is a bonus. And I'm calling it a bonus because I only have grown this for one year, but in that one year, I was so impressed. And I'm talking about incredible Coreopsis. This flower, I knew it was good. I saw a couple of other growers incorporating it into their bridal work and I thought, oh wow, this is an impressive flower. It kind of goes with everything. It goes with the yellows, it goes with the pinks, it goes with the oranges, it goes with the reds. It goes with everything. It has a very whimsical nature about it, kind of like a Cosmo. You know how Cosmo blows in the wind and it's very whimsical? That's how this Coreopsis was. And if I'm being honest with you, started it from seed, super easy. Um, in fact, I'm tripling the, the amount of space that I'm giving to this Coreopsis this year because it was so good, so good. The deer ate it down to the ground, so I didn't get to harvest it until later in the season. But when I did, it was so beautiful. I can't wait to grow more of that this year. There are so many great fillers just off the top of my head. We've got honeywort, bupleurum, uh, yarrow. Oh my gosh, the list goes on and on and on. But those that I just told you about are some of my absolute favorites. They're easy to start from seed. And honestly, if you're a first year grower, these are all going to work for you, especially that basil, get it on the list. Mrs. Burns Citrus Lemon Basil will probably be my ultimate favorite filler flower until the end of time. What cut flower filler did I miss? What, what do you think should be on this list? Fill me in, I'd love to hear it. Whether or not you're growing for the first year or you're experienced, these fillers are going to be worth all of your time and efforts and it's the biggest bang for your buck because you can get these seed packets for just a few dollars each. And sometimes it's okay to grow from plugs as well. In fact, I ordered several 
plugs in this year for this spring because I know my limitations on my time. So you can do it either way. You can start from seed or you can order plugs in. The most economical way to grow them is going to be from seed, but then you also have to factor in your time and how much that is worth. <laughs> it's kind of a math game. I'm always measuring and seeing where my time is better spent. And that is my list of my favorite cut flower fillers for the farm. Now, I know you guys are all over the place in different parts of the country, so some of you guys are starting seeds, some of you guys are not yet, and that's okay. We're all on different schedules, and some of us have protected spaces to grow in, like a hoop house, and some of us don't. So if you aren't starting your seeds yet, that's okay. We all have different schedules. I'll tell you guys what I'm I'm doing so far is I have some seeds started in the basement, lisianthus, petunias, um, some lobelia, a couple other things, some fever few. And then I also, um, today, right now, soaking are my ranunculus and my anemone corms for 2024. <laughs> yes, it's that time. So I'll be putting together some videos on those things this week, and I'm excited to share all of the 2024 season with you guys. All right, I'm gonna get back to cuddling with the cats on the couch. <laughs> Thanks for sticking around, guys. We'll see you soon. Flitter, flitter, flitter. I can't even talk today. Get out of here!